So welcome everybody to everybody <laughs> to the virtual roundtable. Today is day two. We're just about to start, and Sharon's first session is uh, obviously a, sadly, sadly under <laughs> under visited. So it's just the three of us, which also makes it nice and beautiful as a workshop because we've yes. experienced yesterday quite a number of workshops with few participants and we were really surprised how much we can learn from each other's mistakes or slownessness and on things so thank you Sharon for providing this You're workshop welcome. for us You're welcome now to introduce okay. to you everyone Sharon Hartley who is in uh, Italy and I've had the great great pleasure to be visiting uh, her the wonderful place where she's living and uh, Sharon Hartley is an associate professor in the Department of Foreign Languages and Literature at Verona University. So she's in beautiful Verona. <clears throat> she is specialized in English language teaching pedagogy and didactics and works specifically in the field of English for specific purposes. She has worked for many years in the field of e-learning and specializes in multimedia material development for ELT in blended learning contexts. So uh, we're looking forward, Sharon, to a, a workshop on, and it's actually uh, the second version of a mm. particular a kind of software. So we are looking forward to its updates, its news, and what is in store for us if we want to use it. Thank you so much, Sharon. Yes. Thank you, Heike. And I was going to begin by asking the participants to tell, to, um, tell me what sparked their interest in Triptychon. Um, so, <laughs> Georgia, what sparked your interest in Triptychon? You know, I heard about it, like about Triptychon for the very first time, I think last year when you first did your uh, when you when you showed it i think it was at this conference right yep, this it one was, yep. but um i i don't remember exactly how it works uh, oh well so it can why be why you used it for so i think this this could be useful for me to see yes. once again and heike what about you <laughs> what sparked your interest in triptychon well to be honest there's quite a number of free tools around to mm. be able to do what well we, i kind of remember way back the old what was it the, the filling gap thing you uh, can't remember the name now even anyway uh, there's quite hot a potatoes few. no huh hot potatoes no? exactly yeah. exactly that that was the one we used a lot back then mm. to be honest yeah i really enjoyed it as well and then there's quite a bit of free software around. Now I see that Triptico is not free. No, Triptico isn't free, but so um, I'm interested in the reasons why you would want, um, why would you, why you think that this software is really worth paying for. Yeah, well, first of all, because it's not free, but it's it's very cheap. And I checked the pricing this morning to see if it had changed, and it hasn't. So it costs 21 euros for a year license, which is pretty good value for money. But let's explore it a little bit. So um, I was going to begin by showing you the first video on the EdTech um, course, which is the introduction. Okay, um, I hope the, the, the audio works on this. Let's see. Hello, everybody. I'm Sharon Hartle. And is the audio working? Yes, it is. Good. All right. So, um, Georgia, you know this anyway, but I'm going to play this little introduction because I say a few things about Triptico and then we'll create our own free um, account. The, the free accounts are really good, but they only allow you to create five activities. You have those forever then, you can use them, but it's only five. So then you have to decide whether you're going to invest your 21 euros or not. And I am not um, a sales representative for Triptico, I hasten to add. Although I must say that David, who developed it, is really supportive. Um, he's really good. You, you know him as well, Heike, don't you? You've met him. Have I? Yeah. 
well, I don't know if you've met him, but we we, we wrote had some because, email exchange yes, afterwards. And he's, and I he's very it was supportive. Really, really cool yeah. approach. Yeah, that he came up with. I keep telling people about this one, yes. but um, yeah, I haven't actually met him in person as of no. But you've met him through emails and things. Anyway, let's have a look at this video that I've frozen myself on. And I work for the University of Verona in Italy. I've been an English language teacher for a long time. I'm also specialised in multimedia materials development. So I decided today that I was going to talk about Triptico because I thought that maybe not many people know about Triptico. It's perhaps not as mainline as resources like Kahoot, but it was developed by David Riley, who's from Yorkshire, like me, incidentally. And he originally developed it as word magnets. And I was looking for these word magnets like the ones you have on your fridge. And I came across this site and these word magnets then became Triptico, which is a whole suite of resources that you can use. I'll say straight away that it's not free, but if you've already looked at the link I put up on the site and which I can actually give you again, you'll see that it is a very good value for money. I paid 21 euros for an annual subscription. And so today what I want to do is to tell you something about Triptico, but I also want to look at how to use games and why we should be using games. So and I would like people to maybe consider how do you use games in your normal teaching? So I'm going to show you very quickly what happens when you access the resource. And then I will go on to look at some of the resources. There are 18 at the moment, so we haven't got time for all of them. Okay. Um, actually, there are now, I think, 21 resources because this was last year. So there are actually even more resources than that tells us. And the first thing I wanted to do then was to show you how to create this free, um, yeah, this free Triptico resource. But I'm in my account, so I'll just sign out for a minute. Okay. So if you go on to Triptico, this is what you see. And do you want um, us to sign up for it? Yeah, you can do. Um, it's you can either do a search for triptychoplus.com or um, just do a search for triptycho plus and it should come up. So if you do a search for triptycho plus, then you go to triptycho home. Okay, have you got that? Create my free account. Are you on? Exactly. Georgia, are you there too? Okay, so let's create a free account. So if we click here, you can use any name you want. I'm going to use Haggis. Thank you for registering. Da, 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 da. I'm going to sign in again. <clears throat> it's strange that they go for username. Close to emails. Well, they're asking me for an email. Really? Can you use your email as a username? Um, I'm not quite sure what you're doing. Let's have a look at it together because um, it hasn't asked me. It's two simple steps. So unless you already put your email in, um, we can do it again, but this is the um, so just for signing in. A, uh, okay, uh, fine. Okay, um, and then you have to activate it. So, <clears throat> but I'm not going to. Share to this or do you want me to share this? The sign up process. Why they come up with the username? Um, if you want to. So you use your email, that is really interesting. Just uh, this one. Let's use that one. So, trip to go. Trip to go plus, that's it. So 
So if I log in, then create one for free. See, uh, I can say I yeah. So you put your name. I, yeah. So and I'm going and your to email. Give a norm uh, my other email account. So I could. I write it Philip this time because maybe it get, gets confused. Maybe. Mm. So, but if I do that, it says choose a username. Yeah. So I have to create a new username. And then when I yeah. log in, it wants the username, but it doesn't even, uh, not the email address. I'm just saying. Oh, um, yeah, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you can use your email address if you can. want. Yeah. Okay, I didn't realize that. Then I might change that because uh, usernames I forever get wrong. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Okay. How are you doing, Georgia? Have you managed to? Yes, I am um, signed in and I see the. Do you want to share your screen with us, Georgia, so we can show people what they see when they sign in on the free account? Okay. But I'm, I'm, it's very similar to what you see if you have the permanent account, because once you've got a free account, you can just convert it if you want to. Yeah, it's exactly what you would see. So if you um, look at the top on the right, you can see that George has signed in and if she wants to, she can sign out. OK, great. And I see um, the you see these sample games. OK, come out for the, a minute and we'll move on because. Uh, good, good, good. Great. OK, so we have our um, accounts, so we're all set to go, really. But I'm going to go on to the next video. Um, and the one I wanted to show you, first of all, was um, this one, one three. The next thing I want to talk to you about is how, what Triptychor actually does. So it starts with lists and you can see different colors here. So this would be a simple list, maybe days of the week or something. This one is true false. So, so this is going quite fast, so I'm going to pause it. You see that it's got this yellow line underneath. When you go into your triptychal, even on the free one, you'll see the sample ones are like this. If it's a yellow, it's just a list of things. So this was describing places and it gave people instructions. This one is red and green. And then you have the option of blue and yellow. So it could also be correct, incorrect. And this one is just a two item list. So in this case, we'd have the verb and the pattern. So verb plus gerund plus ing, verb plus two and the infinitive. Just to show you that in a different way, we've got the three options, simple, two item, true or false. So my two item list would have things like avoid and ing. And my true false one is actually based on students production. So we have an example like he avoided to come late. And then on the other one, you can give feedback. You can say false. You need to use two plus infinitive. In fact, I didn't here because it's either the ing or it's two and the infinitive. But you could do that. When you go into this one, you then see this. I know this is very confusing, but it's going to be recorded. So you can maybe stop it later if you want. You can view the data. If you have a subscription, you can edit. His, this is where you launch your activities. So I'm going to stop the video now because I think it would be quite useful if we did this together. Also because um, the, the site has recently been completely revamped. So in fact, although on these videos I said I suggested downloading the Triptico software, which you can do, um, you don't need to anymore. So if we just go to Triptico, um, That's quite just, amazing, actually. Yeah, it's it's really good. Um, okay, so this is the Triptico site. Um, and this one I haven't logged in because if you're using this with students, you'll see that there's this black line here and it asks you, are you a student with a code? And you click here. So... Um, Let's just try this out. So don't use the triptychal that I 
gave you before, use um, this one. I'm going to show you how it works. So imagine that you're in class and that you, you are B2 level English students and that you've been studying modal verbs, okay? And we're going to actually review those modal verbs. So this is the code. And I often tell students, make a note of the code, or I provide the codes for them so that they can come back later. But they don't even need to have um, joined trip to go to, to be able to use these. They just need to go to that page and put in this code. And then they need to know how to um, open the resource. So, um, if you wanted to do a little test, for example, we could use swipe. So you can see here, this is the list of all the different activities that you can use with those lists that you've put in. Uh, so once you've put in lists, you can um, use them in a whole series of different ways. I'm going to look at swipe now just to show you what it's like, because I realize that unless you do it, you don't realize. OK, so modal verbs. OK. Um, quite complicated modal verbs. And what you have to do, you could do this in class as a quiz, providing prizes for learners like chocolate coins and things if they get it right or whatever you want. So the first one, my phone mustn't has rung in the cinema. Uh, do you think it is correct or incorrect? Just open your, switch on your microphones and tell me because there are only two of you, so. That sounds incorrect to me. <laughs> Georgia, do you agree? Correct? Yeah. Or so, uh, we both, so I just drop I just, and it tells us oh, no. we're right. Okay. <laughs> you shouldn't have driven to the university. It takes too long. Correct or incorrect? Correct. Correct. But okay. But no, I was I was wondering, I was reflecting on the overall meaning of the sentence yes. but that was not the um that's not the task so um well, I got it this. is the task it is the task but anyway okay this one he ought to have studied more to get a better mark correct or incorrect he ought to have studied more to get a better mark this, is, this time it's yours I georgia i won't I give it away <laughs> <laughs> I feel oh. tested now. I'm not a native speaker, okay? Um, Me neither. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I, 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 I wouldn't use ought here, so I, I'd say incorrect, but it sounds correct too. Well, what do you want, correct or incorrect? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I never you use it. It depends, you have to choose one. <laughs> This is a good example of... Uh, I'd go for incorrect. And okay. then the yeah. audience will... Uh... Let's see what happens. It comes, it doesn't like it, it throws it back up because you were wrong. So we have to go to correct. Okay, but you can already see that this swipe is quite a quick limited thing. And um, it's not really allowing the students to think about what's gone on. So um, in fact, the second stage of this, we sub I can submit it again. And I want to use it with this one, which is one of my favorites, find them. Okay, so what I often do is I ask students to, um, if I have a lot of students, I'll ask them to take a, a screenshot of this and then put them in breakout rooms and they have to decide which, because only eight of these are correct. So they have to talk together and decide which ones they think are correct and which ones they think are incorrect. Then they come back into the main room. I'm talking about Zoom. I mean, if you do it in the classroom, you don't have to use breakout rooms. You can just have groups. Um, and we'd have, again, we'd have a team game and with prizes, of course. And um, we do it in a similar way. So what you have to do, we'll do it as a team game now. So it's Heike against Georgia. Georgia, choose one that you think is correct, because the idea is to find the correct ones. And I'll make a note of the score whilst we go. Wait a minute, if I get a piece of paper would help. Oh, these technologies. You should have driven to the university, it takes too long. <laughs> 
Okay, where is it? Should it this um, one? This one. Yay. Okay, but now you'll see that there's a little um, magnifying glass appearing, and that gives you feedback. So it tells you that this is criticism of a past event. So that tells you that this is a, a form which is often used to provide criticism. You shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have doing, done that. You criticize. So we're actually providing more information. Okay, over to Heike. Only the correct ones. So still to find seven, okay. So yeah. I, I'd start at the top left, yeah. Susie might have felt 30, that's why she wanted the cappuccino. Correct. Okay, same thing. It says it's past probability, might have felt thirsty. Okay, and Heike gets a point. All right. Uh, Georgia, another one? So are you noting down the points on your yes, piece of paper, piece yes. of paper at your desk? <laughs> yeah, I take piece of paper, yeah. Okay. Go on, Georgia. <laughs> um, he ought to have studied more to get a better mark. Uh, where is it? Bottom, uh, next to... This one. Uh, to one. Yes. Okay, good. Georgia gets another point, and it says it's not so strong. It's rather an idea of there's a spelling mistake there, but never mind. Of it would have been nice. Okay, Heike, your turn. I'll stay at the top row. <laughs> Someone must have been eaten all the biscuits. There are none left. That's correct. No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> So someone must have been eaten all the biscuits. There are none <laughs> left. That is correct. No, no, it would be someone must have eaten, not someone must have been. Have been eaten. Okay, okay, you're right. <laughs> okay, so the, the feedback for this is which is the extra word? Why might someone make this mistake? So you can um, integrate it into your lesson then by having a discussion of this. It may just be because, like Heike, you're caught up in the excitement of the game and you, not that she doesn't really understand it, of course. Okay, so I'm going to stop that there, but Georgia is the winner. You get your uh, chocolate coin later. Well done. <laughs> Never mind, Heike, there will be chance to do another one later on. But as you can see, uh, this is a different level to the swipe activity that we did before, because um, you can do it this way that I just explained by having a quiz, or another way I sometimes do it is just to get the students to go into groups and with a computer play the game um, themselves and look at the feedback and then come back and ask questions about things they haven't understood. So whole range of things you can do there. So I think you're getting the idea of some of the... Now, the question would have been for me, um, if we, if George and myself were in Triptico as, uh, as people or accounts, mm -hmm. could, we, could we click on this uh, yeah. together? Yeah. yeah. So if you... Um, okay, let's go back a stage. So you're my student, Heike. You haven't you, you, you haven't got an account because you're not a teacher. We're coming back to that. And you don't want an account. You're just a student. So I would have given you that number and I would have told you use find them because I tell the students what they need to use. So you would click here. Could you you and I'm not, um, I'm not on the other, uh, on Firefox earlier where I didn't sign up for anything. No, no, you I, don't need to sign up for anything. You, you yeah, need, so go, um, could you give me the code one more time? Yeah, what go to, are you on Triptico Home? Yeah, Triptico Home. Okay. And I clicked on the black bar where it says. Yeah. Click where it says click here. Yeah. And then you put in the number and the number is. 42960, I think. 42960. Okay. And then I choose the resource. Then you have to submit it. And then all the resources come out. So then you have to choose number five, find them. So I, as a student, mm -hmm. uh, choose the, sele the select the mode. 
Triptico was unable to open the resource in a new page. Please update your browser settings to allow pop-ups from the site if you prefer resources to open in a new page. Okay. There's okay. Georgia, can you do it? Let's see. And still it's open. It's open for some reason. And it comes. Yeah. Open with this resource. Okay. And then you can just do it in the same way. So, I mean, my student... I Who's think. just done that? Hmm? Who clicked on the... Uh, I did. You did. Because if I click on this one here... You want to share your screen, Heike? You don't see it in real life, that what I click on? Would you like to share your screen? Sure. Because we won't see it unless you share your screen. Because it's not... I it, thought you're seeing it. Not interact, like the students cannot interact. Yes, they can. With one another. Oh, really, we can? No, not with what, not online. You, you yeah. have to be able to see Heike. Okay, Heike, now we can see it. Uh, so you, we need a Zoom, basically. It's a bit like Kahoot, no? We need a Zoom? To... Yeah, you, well, you need Zoom or you need somebody with a computer. I mean, I often use it with my students in groups in the classroom and one person has a computer or a telephone. That's all you need. Ah, okay. This is why you originally said that this is Triptico is a great way of, of using Zoom. And uh, yeah. Well, um, it's a, a good way to, in any way. I mean, I use it a lot in normal classes too, not only on okay. Zoom. Yeah. Now I'm I just wondering, it so it's not, it's on Zoom. but you can't play the games against each other in this in the platform it's always a single player game yeah 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 okay and but the so it can either be um as i did it with you so it's teacher led or you put people in groups and one student shares the screen and you play it okay gotcha okay okay thank you good okay let's go back now where are we um, yeah, so I wanted to move on slightly because uh, I've got too many things open. Now I'm looking at the program, Marta. That's not what we want. Here we are. So what I wanted to do next was to actually create an activity with you to show you how to do it. Um, so I will now actually go back to my page. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we are. So this is what you see when you sign in. So as you can see, I'm signed in and it looks exactly the same way as yours did Georgia or yours did Heike, even though you have the, the free account and I have the, the um, premium account. So these are my some of my different Triptico activities. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, you start with the lists. All you need is the lists. And then Triptico automatically gives you the opportunity to use a whole range of different, um, different activities. So when you create something, you click on create up here, and this is what you see. So you can, if you do this, it, it's a, a one-sided card like this. So this is fine if you just want some, I don't know, um, if you're asking questions uh, and you want people to be able to answer them. So where do you live? Or if you have things like days of the week or something like that, something very simple. But normally you want more than just one card. So you have to go to the bottom of the screen and you find options. And you click on that and you can click on two. So you'll see that you now have two um, two options, you have two cards. And you can either do them, as I said, 
with something like verb patterns where you maybe have the verb and then the pattern, or you can have true or false like this. So you um, say, and I do this very often with my students. So we'll do this one just to, so this is mm, the, the examples you had in the modalities were from that. So these were mistakes that students had made. So um, if I said, I let's choose a different grammar point. Let's choose comparatives just to have something. So um, it's more warm today of yesterday. I'm just imagining somebody said that. This is false, so I leave that. If I want it to be true, I can put it there. So I'm using true and false here to mean correct or incorrect. And I then have the option on the back of the card to just say incorrect or to give some feedback. So I can say um, you need warmer here and not all, but then, okay? And you can make as many of those as you want, and then you save them and you have your list ready. And that can then be used in a whole series of different ways. So why don't we, who would like to make one? Um, Heike or Georgia? Can I think it would be nice if we make one together. Here. Um, well, if, oh. Heike, if we make it together, do you not think the information will come out? Could be. Hmm? Just so, would you like to make one or Georgia, would you like to make one? Okay, Georgia. That's fine for me. I can, do you want me to share my screen? Yeah, share your screen. So I'm signed in, right? Yeah. So you click on create at the top. Is this on... exactly what I see? Yeah. yeah this is yeah. a free account. So I, 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 I don't use a sample. I don't start from a sample. I start no, from you can scratch. Create. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. And you can give it a title. So what would you like to call it? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, the days of the week. Yeah. Okay. A1. Um, so we want two-sided cards. Well, with days of the week, what? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. Maybe what day is today? Friday or Sunday. Yes, that's going to be difficult because if you say what day of the week is today, today changes. All oh, right, what day happening. comes uh, after um, Wednesday? Just do a one-sided card for the moment. Okay. So just just put in the the days of the week. Okay. All right, I don't have to put the questions on the card, no. but the mm -hmm. answers. Um, yeah, that's why I was confused. Or some teachers will use translations, so they could do a two-sided card with Monday, lunedì, Tuesday, martedì, if you okay. want to. Um, I could do that. Okay. So, no, you don't need true or false then, because it's not true or false. It's just, right. yeah, leave it. Okay, so that's fine. Right, so... Okay. Okay. Put in the others. Let's have all the days of the week. Uh, add at the bottom on the right. As I needed to move my. Okay. And you can always go back and edit these later. So, you know, if you see there's a mistake or something, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I should save now. Save it, yeah. Okay. And it asks you to put a file there. So weekdays or something, it doesn't matter, days of the week. 
page. Oh, no. How do you how do you add tags like this? Like a two. Um, a two. Mm -hmm. okay, and you can see that underneath those are coming up. You see, those are the, the tags you're adding. You can see coming up in that blue box. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. right. and then you can Italian, English yeah. and Italian as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now at the moment you can see that it's private. So that means that only you can see it. But if you click on public. Mm -hmm. I can't. I'll click on private. It doesn't work. I don't know why. Um, maybe it's because of the free version. I don't think so. Um, yeah, because I can click to, I can click on tags, mm. um, but this is, it doesn't work. So maybe, yeah. Okay, we'll try saving it for the moment. <clears throat> Okay, so I, I will see it on saved files. Yes. Here. If you go into your saved files, you'll see it. Okay. Okay. And you see that it's got the yellow and the blue lines, which tells you that it's two-sided, but not okay. true or false. And it says it's public. Oh, maybe all the no, ones on the I, free versions are public. Or, but this looks disabled, like you cannot play well, on. Well, let me, let me try. Hang on. What's the number? Four, three. Oh, Zero, three, four. Three, four. Okay. So come out, come out from sharing your screen. Let me share mine. Okay. So if I sign out. So I'm your student, Georgia, and you've given me the number, so I can just put it in. No, no it's private. I think private. that since it's free version, <laughs> I cannot uh, edit the private public um, setting. Okay, uh, you try, but I think that you could probably use it anyway. So you um, try going out and submitting the code and see if you can use it. If you can launch it uh, from my account or mm -hmm. from a student account, like I don't think the students can use it because it's public. Launch it from your account. So, so if I click, screen. if I click on it, share just, the screen because we. Yes, can't. I'm doing it. If I click okay. on it, yes, this is what I see. Yes, so, so then I you have just, all the different choices. So I click just on it. Click on it like that. And scroll along until you come to, um, well, mm, go to swipe again. Uh, was it at the beginning? No, swipe. No, alphabetical. Uh, there's no swipe. No, there's no swipe because it's not true or false. Okay, go to... Simple, uh, maybe it's simple selector. No, go to spinner. Spinner is a nice one. Okay. One next to it. Okay. Okay, uh, so can I just uh, ask one more time for the number? Four three something. Four three oh three four. Oh three. But it, it's likely it won't work. It likely won't work. Uh, we don't know because um, it looks like from the free account um, we can't set um, the yeah. mm, the cards or whatever you do. Uh, on on the public to to the public setting yeah you can you can only show it i think but your students won't be able to access it but you can okay now if you put your cursor on that and just move it round move move your students, cursor around, okay the students would not be able to access it no be, not on the free account you have to pay the 21 euros mm. okay so i spin it and yeah, now and and your student has to say what they think that is. So you would say Jovidi, and then you click on it and you tell them that they're right. Okay. So spin it again. Sabato, Saturday. Okay. Oh, that's nice. 
Yes, and you can actually, uh, you can start with the English or you can start with Italian. So if you click on that yellow box, yes, there, um, you can, selection methods change. Hmm. No, you should be able to. Let's try random, Let's maybe. Let's try random, yeah. Okay, so, but I don't know if Tuesday. No, it's still starting with the English, I don't know. Uh, okay. Maybe it has to do with the fact that they're not ordered. Yes. Mm. The order of the yeah, Okay. Um, how do we change, like, okay. oh, okay. you this is it, I have to go, go, yeah, I go just back go. to where it says signed in. Yes, okay. it's, it was another um, yeah. um, another window. Yeah, go on to the word magnets because the word magnets are quite nice. This was the original game. So you can see that you can actually move those around wherever you want, okay? And if you put your cursor on the top and and drag it down over one of those cards, it'll turn it over. Yeah, okay, do it again, it turns oh. it back in. Okay, and if you do it from the bottom to the top, then you can change the color. Oh, nice, uh, let's do it yellow. Okay, yeah. all right, for some reason. And if you click on the yellow at the bottom, Okay, and then it says uh, to select template, template, all right? Here? Yeah. Now you can have lots of different backgrounds. So a simple one is the second one. So you have two columns. Click on that one. Okay. And then you have two columns. So you can move your word magnets into different columns or put them in the middle or do what you want with them. So for example, um, if you were doing the, the activity I have on the videos, which is your verb patterns, uh, verbs with ing or with to an infinitive, you could have a to an infinitive column and an ing. And every time somebody gets something wrong, you can change the color and put it at the bottom so that you can come back to it. So I put on the right the days of the week starting with the letter T. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, or you can organize them how you want. Okay, good. So come out of that one, Georgia, maybe come. Let's give Heike a turn at sharing her screen. Yes. Uh, Heike has been busy in the meantime. Looking oh, show us what you've been doing, Heike, then. <laughs> Crypto core accounts. <laughs> the free account, share files, no. And I was just wondering yeah. why, why would somebody sell a software that you, you can do five activities designed because to be worked with students and not be able to use but You them. can, you can use them in the class. You just can't, um, the students can't access them independently, but there's no reason why Georgia can't take her days of the week and project them in the classroom and use them. I understand, but it just seems uh, very strangely limiting for a collaborative software. Yeah. And the one thing I would have wanted to ask is uh, simply, uh, why not use Quizlet? Quizzes, Quizlet. It's very similar. Well, Quizlet is a different thing. Um, Triptico gives you the chance to use, as we've just seen, you can use it to test something. You can use it to, um, you can use it for, to give feedback. You can, and it's also different from, Quizlet has different options. So Quizlet is, much easier, I think, if you also want your learners then to make their own Quizlets or if you want to do Quizlet Live-like activities. So it really depends what you want to do. I use both, in fact. Um, I use different things, different tools for different things. 
Um, did you actually make a, a game, Heike? Did you no, make? Did I, you have, have no, I haven't, but um, I see we've got a new the, participant in the group, and we've got uh, just five minutes to go until the next mm -hmm. workshop. So I'm, I'm I'm really interested in uh, the value add of Triptycho because Quizlet. The one thing that Quizlet has, for example, is if I wanted days of the week mm -hmm. or if I want there's already kind of a database that people share yeah yeah um, so the quizlets of teachers mm -hmm. can be shared by the teachers and are being shared freely so sometimes I don't even need to create the lists mm -hmm. Monday lunary yeah which yeah. makes it for a teacher a lot more beneficial in many respects because I well, can do, yeah, a lot yeah. of resources. Yes, it's like the right. same with oh. Triptycho is the question. No, I, although um, with Quizlet, it, it, even if you use other people's resources, you always have to check them very carefully before you use them oh. and you have to adapt yeah. them to your own needs. But yeah, that's one of the, but it's a different type of thing. Um, Triptycho is very, um, it's, it's very much for the teacher. So it's what you want to do with your own class. Um, and the value of Triptycho is that it provides you with all these different activities. So all you need is two lists and yes, you create your lists, but then you can use it in a whole different series of ways. Mm -hmm. okay. But to me, and I, I've, I've, and I never used it before today. It's mm -hmm. the first time I see it from the teacher side mm -hmm. and also from a student side. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, it it looks like like if I want to create something very specific um, mm -hmm. for any reason for a classroom, uh, um, it's less. There are less um, limitations as compared mm -hmm. to other. Um, clickers such as quizlet or kahoot or and so on so there's there's more options yeah. and and maybe with the same uh, i don't know because i don't use quizlet that much as a teacher mm. uh but maybe there's like with the with the same list you get more you get to exploit the same material in a way yeah, um, yeah, in, in, a, in a wider um like in, in many many different ways much more yes. than I mean, but that, I'm, just the, I'm the, not sure because the I word don't... magnets um you've got so many different backgrounds that you can use there to do different things to organize things in different ways or there's another one which we haven't looked at <clears throat> called there are lots of them hexagons where you can put the information in different visual um order or the groups one let me just show you this quickly the groups one if I can, but I've switched it off now. Um, if I can add something else, I think that uh, like this has a bit more potential for inclusion, um, mm. perhaps rather than rather than Quizlet or um, oh, yeah something else mm. because you can actually change. As Sharon said, the background, the colors. Uh, um, of course, it's you cannot change everything, but um, for students who need specific uh, adjustments, uh, this okay. might be actually um, an aid. And yeah. can you can you add images to yes, yes, the words? Can. Yeah, and yeah. can you add um, can you add sound? I don't know if you can add sound. You can, well, there is the, there are the the custom sounds of the of the program. I don't know if you can add your own sounds. <clears throat> you can you can let it read to you, Luna D, Master D, and things like that. Um, I don't know. It doesn't do that. No, it doesn't do that. Okay. That's not the way you use it. Um, just to finish, because we're we're running out of time. Um, there's a, a worksheet here, I'm just saying this for the video, um, which is available from the program if you click on it. Because I, put it in a, I put it on in a, a Google file. These are two of the activities that we were looking at, okay. uh, or the, the ones we actually haven't been looking at these because they're on the videos. So I wanted to show you different things. But if you look at the videos on the course, this is what you'll see. But um, I just wanted to have a look at this one quickly and as i said um you know the free one is quite limited but it only costs 21 euros so um 
Now, this one is one that you can use to do if you want to just group a list. Um, okay, so imagine that I have, um, no, that's okay. I can use what I want. Zainab, we're running about 10 minutes late. We started 10 minutes late. So give her a couple of more minutes if that's okay. Thank you so much. It's okay. It's okay. Yes. We can change the, the background to this. Um, but it's not working exactly the way I want it. Okay. Um, because... And I don't know why it's not doing this. Normally, when it comes up, you choose how many groups you want. So if you have three groups, but you can also see this if you look at it later because it's on one of the videos. So, but just to do it quickly because we don't have so much time. If I divided my students into three groups, I could divide the verbs up into three groups very easily, automatically. And they then take a photograph of that or a, a screenshot and they go into their groups and they write examples with one of these. So imagine that promise was one of the verbs for your group and you have to write um, an example using the, the verb form that's true or false. And in this case, it would be true or false according to the information, not, not correct or incorrect. So... I could, for example, say, oh. so you could ask your students to write true or false statements about the verbs for their group. They would then come back to the whole group and everyone would have the image that they'd taken before and uh, they would then share those. So you would just tell me whether you think this is true or false. So Georgia, is it true or is it false? Microphone. <laughs> I think it's true. It's true, okay. So that's one thing you could do or you could ask them to create gap fillers. So then they have to do two things. First of all, they have to look at the image they took before of the verbs and say which verb they think goes in the space. And then they have to say whether they think it's true or false. So let me do another one of these. And then I promise I'll finish. Is, is GAPFA also one of the activities of Triptico? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. These are, all, there are at the moment there are 21 different activities on Triptico. So um, a lot of right. <laughs> Didn't quite count. I, I, yeah, complete honest, sentences as well as just just words, you know. But that depends on count. the list that you put in. The I mean, the, the activities I, work with any list that you put in. Mm -hmm. So if you put the words, that's what you get. If you put sentences, you get that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was thinking before, and I don't think it's really comparable to Quizlet. It's a different thing. You use them in different ways. And where where would it be the difference? Lots of differences because um, Quizlet is, um, it started out its life as um, flashcards, so it can be used for flashcards. It's um, extremely useful for um, testing knowledge that learners have already, and as I said, it's useful for asking students to do things, um, but it's always the same activity, it's always the, the flashcards and you either look at them or you turn them around or you write them down or you recognize them or you match them or you create a test, but it's always that. Here, each game is different. It could be groups of cards or it could be the, the magnets or it could be find more right It's more one. game directed. So, it's so it's, it, yeah, has, it, it has become a, a, a playful game kind of thing with yes. uh, the vocabulary. Right, this one. Um, uh, no, bingo. Okay. I didn't actually mean I didn't want bingo. I wanted. So it's uh, entertaining. It's enjoyable. So the students love to to work with it, right? 
because it's uh, yeah. this game factor. And all the students need, and on, my, on our Moodle, I just give them a list of all the numbers of the different games that we've used during the term. And I tell them which games to use with them and they can go back and they can use them again. Excellent. So um, this one, for example, resist. But really, it's like any of these things. It's up to you as a teacher what you do with them. So um, I'll come out of this now because we are actually. So yeah, I, um, I would actually. Might be another, it might be another aspect would be to, um, because if something like Quizlet, which is, I think, American, <laughs> is free, it always is like uh, that these kind of activities are being used somewhere else by others and mm. so forth. And uh, this free sharing also means that you don't own a copyright on your, well, mm. or you can restrict it. But as I said, um, if something is free, there's always a catch. Um, mm. And a lot of the free tools are out there are selling your data. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's Biptico, true. which is based in the UK, therefore yeah. and, uh, data um, privacy a lot more. Restrictive. Uh, David David developed this software and he's always working on it. He changes it all the time. I mean, it's gone through so many evolutions since he um, originally developed it. And I just, I believe in supporting him anyway. And the 21 euros I pay to use Triptico is nothing. I mean, I, I've used it for years. And is, I is it a, like you pay it once or is once it a, a year? year? Once a year. year, but yeah. I think there's a there's a pro version of Quizlet too that you pay. Yes, for. there is, and I had it for a while, but I didn't see any advantage, so I stopped using it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Zainab said she thinks it's much more engaging. Uh, so Zainab, would you? Well, if if this is what you pointed out, is that Triptico is more of the uh, game-like flashcard uh, learning. Yeah. Yeah, Zainab, then, uh, are you, surely are you it's a value add. Are you here, Zainab? Have you got your microphone? Can you tell us? Yes. Hi. Great, hi. Actually, um, just because I joined you very late, <laughs> sorry. And uh, but now I, I'm seeing what you, what you are doing. And it, I think it's, it seems very engaging, mm. uh, more engaging than uh, quiz left and I think it has much more options mm -hmm. for teachers to create as yeah. Mike said is game based well I don't know if you came um, after we created the free um, the free accounts but I suggest you play with it the free account has the limitation as Heike was saying that you can't share the um, the games with your students so they can't access it independently but you can use it in class you can create a game and it's yours for as long as you want and you can use that you can make up to five uh, games that you can use in class and then if you decide you use it all the time like I do then you can pay your 21 euros and mm -hmm. I don't know how many Just people use um, I don't whether think the, that the evolution of things would be that he would allow the learners also to add. Well, I'm uh, sure if we ask him, we, you know, if you ask him, he might. No, <laughs> no I'm just saying perhaps you've talked to, to David um, as regards to his development plan of things. Mm. Yeah, as I yeah. said, if we ask him, he might. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Sharon. Okay. Thank you. Sharon, and Thank I, you, I Sharon. mispronounced your name in the introduction. I said Hartley, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, Hartle. Oh, don't worry. So, Sharon it's Hartle, uh, we thank you so much. And uh, best regards for the rest of the day in Italy. Thank you so much for you. sharing the software with us and also the new features and lovely mm -hmm. to see. Yes, because it it's action. been really simplified and, you know, it's easy to use, but I think you have to, like anything, you have to get in and try it out. Yeah. And thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay.